Coffee Stain have just released another minor update 8 news video on quality of life changes and I'm going to say that update 8 is anything but small. But I also have to admit that I was wrong. I'm sorry guys, but we'll get to that shortly. First though, they have announced that they have now have an internal window of release for the update, which they're working towards currently. Uh, obviously, we don't know the actual date just yet, but as soon as we do know, I will let you guys know. So what's coming? Well, in the most recent update, Jace talks about eight new quality of life features. I think I've got the right amount there. Uh, which are going to be coming to update 8, which greatly improved the playability of the game, fixing a lot of the minor issues which can disrupt the enjoyability of the game. So the first change is coming to parachutes. Now, rather than being a one-use item, they will now be reusable, making it much more beneficial in the early game, as well as receiving a buff to the glide speed and maneuverability. Now, it's never been a priority for me um, in particular to have, but perhaps this changes that. Um, I can see it being particularly useful in the Spire Coast, where there's lots of vertical cliffs to, to like fly between, but we'll see. The zipline has also been buffed, allowing us to travel across ceiling points without falling off by accident. And we'll also be able to do this with the power towers that were shown off in last week's video. And now changing lines is just as easy as looking in either direction or clicking A or D to turn, though it is limited to an angle change of about 60 degrees. Anything more than that and you're going to fly off and fall down. So do bear that in mind if you are building a factory with zip lining in mind. And the final change to zip lines is that you can now toggle mount the zip lines by pressing the right mouse button instead of holding down the mouse button in order to stay on the line. This is actually a big change. I like how they're trying to uh, give us more usability and bring these new traversal methods, or not new traversal methods, but traversal methods to light and encouraging us to use them more. Jace also touched on the power towers and the two power lines that are connected to the other towers are just for aesthetics. Um, I mean, they do pass the power along, but they're not going to be used for two separate circuits or stepping up, stepping down power, as some of you have suggested. But perhaps that's something they're going to be bringing later on. Now this next change we actually caught in a previous teaser. This is the conveyor belts. They now start being built with the conveyor pole stand attached to them. The same goes for the pipes. This is a small change, but it's quite substantial given we've always had to place down an extra item in order to use the pipe or the conveyor. And even better is the change to the invalidity placement. Um, now the items will only come up as invalid placement after the second click. You know how you can have the first click for placement and then the second one for the angle. Uh, well, now it's the second one that allows us to choose whether the, the build is invalid or not. Now this means that you can now place belts and pipes on a second tier of height without having to place scaffolding to use them. This is a huge improvement for me. I use this all the time, but maybe it's something that you just haven't noticed if you tend to, to stay building on a single floor height, but it is quite a good change for the game. Another big change is the dismantle filter. This was actually something that was already in update seven, uh, which you could activate by holding down control and then pressing the thumb mouse button but it was a little bit buggy at times and there were some use cases for it. So instead what they've done with this is they've added the dismantle filter and to activate this you hover over you hover your dismantle mode over a particular buildable and then press G. This will toggle that buildable as the only buildable to be selected during dismantling. This is fantastic for when you're working on big build lines and so maybe you place the conveyor line wrong and you want to just dismantle the conveyor line rather than the foundations. And even better yet, this dismantle mode also works with full blueprints as well. 
The first person trace has now been adjusted. Uh, so currently you may not have realized, I certainly hadn't, that the reticle is not perfectly centered on what you're aiming at. It's been slightly off this whole time and now I know that it's slightly annoying. Um, so all they've done is just centered the reticle so that it's now in the right position. Uh, we probably won't notice it, but maybe we will. Um, they've said to give feedback on this depending on how we feel about it. The next two changes are huge. Firstly, jetpacks now use different fuels. This was teased back in update seven. There was the dev live stream with the whole team using turbo fuel for their jetpacks, but they've gone above and beyond with this, allowing us to use four types of fuel, um, which are packaged fuel, solid biomass, packaged turbo fuel and packaged biofuel. And yes, we can set our preferred fuel in descending order um, in the equipment section. And each fuel has slightly different features. For example, solid biomass is cheap to come by in the early game. So we'll subsequently have less power and feel slightly sluggish compared to the other fuels. Uh, this is a big change because if you come across Jetpack Johnny, who I've still never found, by the way, you'll be able to gain a jetpack for the early game, which you can use with solid biomass, which could be really helpful. Normal fuel now has slightly higher vertical acceleration, so a nice little buff to that. And turbo fuel gives a huge buff to speed, both vertically and horizontally, making it great for exploring. And packaged biofuel is very powerful, offering a much slower burn rate, allowing you to travel much further on a single package. This is fantastic, as it gives us a reason to produce biofuel. But I do wonder if they're considering ways to actually automate biofuel biofuel because up to now we haven't been able to we, we have to harvest all of the the biomass manually but who knows what else they may bring with that if that's the case and finally the biggest change is fart rocks can now be destroyed with nobelisk i mentioned prior that i didn't believe this was coming and rather the teaser scene prior was a red herring but i am mistaken i'm sorry guys um, but it's a great change, allowing us to clear the areas of poisonous gas. But what I do want to, to question is, is this going to nullify the need for gas mask filters in your eyes? Let me know your thoughts below. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing patrons, most notably our Solar Clips patrons, James Irwin, Firefless, and Trebor, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity Ben, Star, Shoku the MN Wolf, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which is the Souch and Husky. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.